please bear with us. Uh, there is a plenary, but uh, as I speak to you now, it's, uh, the person who speak is the last one. Uh, members to join. I decided to leave the plenary to come and uh, inform members to say uh, they must give us at least another five minutes where members will be able to join uh, 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 from a plenary. So my apology, but they are coming. Do you accept my apology, uh, the department? Thank you very yes, much, Chair. Okay. We yeah. will be guided by you. Okay, no, thanks. Uh, we'll wait for them.
Honorable Nyambi? Honorable Nyambi? Yes, Mama. Afternoon. We are still waiting for other members. Maybe they are... They Recording are in progress. Okay. After plenary. We requested uh, members in the department to give us at least the time you know, to wait for them. Okay. If you can ask uh, uh, Mama, the the official the, from our side, the secretary to try to call some of them to say, no, it's, it's, it's still on the meeting so that they can log in. Yes, I did. I did. Okay, no, that's good. Yes. And uh, well done. No, thanks. Same to you yesterday. Thanks, thanks. Well done, well done. Hey, we're working. It's a, it's meeting after <laughs> meeting. <laughs> it's hectic. Your quote, you say, uh, you say, what to serve the people? Yeah. What hey. It's uh, Aristotle. Yeah, Aristotle. Yeah, yeah, explaining our role as a responsibility as people is to serve the people and be good to them. And it's, it will be good to them. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like it. Thanks. Not to so far, Mangwe, okay. Velingye from Limbo, yeah. We've got Limbobo, we've got Northwest, we've got Mpumalanga, we've got KZN. Uh, if we can hear five provinces. Uh, We're waiting for one member, only one. Members are tired, but they have to come because all the committees are sitting after the plenary. They have to come out to our meeting. Uh, Aska? Aska? Yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. Uh, how many members are you still waiting for them? Chair, we've because got five. We've got four provinces present. We need one more province. I'm taking Ms. Um, Mr. Matibe and Mam Gwenya was still arrive so we'll have six members five provinces if the two of them join the platform no but uh, for now uh, we've got Limpopo in the province i mean in the yeah. meeting I've got four provinces present yes so we if uh, mom, 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 when you can uh, join then we could five provinces then we could go okay Uh, did you call Tabang to, 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 to tell him to remind Mama to come to the meeting? I sent a message on the members' platform. I will send Tabang as well. Yeah, you must remind Mama. Tell him that uh, we are waiting for Honorable Nguenya. No problem. I see uh, Mr. Matibe's secretary is also on the platform. I'm thinking she has already contacted him. I okay. will get out of the bank now. And then other delegations uh, from except Limpopo from the provinces. How many do we have? Um, Chair, you will have to. I don't. I don't know uh, the special delegates from the province. I take it when we open the meeting, you normally ask them to introduce themselves. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Honorable Ntube, we... Do you know the whereabout of uh, Honorable Ntube? Because Mandon Jenny is attending another health meeting. Can I get a hold of Mr. Ntube? Papa, I think you need to... Yes, Mama. You need to relook uh, with this committee because uh, most of the time you are struggling with the Quran. So you I need to see. give you you need to give us more members. No, we'll try that. Sure. Tabang just came back. He said he will check with her right now. Okay. Uh, uh, from the department, who's leading the delegation? Is it DGG in the uh, in the meeting? DG is in the meeting. No, Honorable Chair, it's Busi Sokobe as the Acting Chief Director, Law Reform and Policy Coordination. DG was supposed to join okay. us, but then she had other prior engagements. Okay, so you will be in the position to answer anything if uh, it may rise. Yes, uh, with the support of the team. Okay, no, no problem. Yes, okay. Chairperson? Yes. We are now down to three provinces. I see Mr. Smith is no longer on the platform. But he was in the platform. Yeah, he's now out of the platform. So, which means our quorum is now Northwest and Pumalanga and KZN. But I'm sure when Mr. Matibe comes, the Limpopo will be back on the platform again. And Mam Gwenya is on the platform. Uh, there is uh, somebody from Northwest. I mean, from 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 Limpopo, man. I saw someone from Limpopo. Oh, okay. So now we are back. We are back to four provinces, chair. We are four without yeah. the Honorable Smith. Correct. Honorable Chair? Oh. Yes, sir. Christian Cape is also present. Oh, well done. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, Papa. Yeah. Um, you were told you are busy with uh, public I'm hearing. Out of the I was, yeah, I, was I know you office. can't miss. That's I know you can't yeah. miss. Okay. Uh, uh, Dr. Bessie, are you representing the Eastern Cape? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. Chairperson, um, if Dr. Bessie is representing Eastern Cape, and we have yourself from Northwest, Mr. Nyambi from Puma. Oh, Honorable Matibe is in the meeting. Uh, we correct. Yeah, we're correcting. Colleagues uh, and uh, members from the department, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. As I started with the apology to say we are having plenary today and especially division of revenue, uh, we couldn't leave the plenary before time. We apologize for keeping you waiting for long. Uh, about geez, how many minutes? Yo, it's a long, yeah. We apologize for that. And let me take this opportunity to welcome you to our meeting. I am not going to waste time. I'm going to welcome the special delegate. Uh, feel free to participate in this platform because when you are here in the NCOP, you are free to participate. Your right is equal to us. Uh, don't feel... Uh, that you are not 
allowed to speak. So feel free to speak. I'm not going to waste any time. You are welcome. Aska, give us the agenda for today. Chairperson, the agenda for today is the negotiating mandate on the National Forest Amendment Bill and then the adoption of the last set of minutes. That is the two items on the agenda, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, how is uh, how are you going to do? Uh, I think uh, oh, on, uh, Mr. Kubas will help you because you don't have voice. I can hear your voice again. It's coming and going. Chairperson, the procedure will be as we did with the alterable. Um, slight difference is that when we read the mandate from the province, we will start with the Eastern Cape, Free State, Gauteng, alphabetically going down the list. What we'll do is the delegate from the province can either read the mandate, him or herself, or ask um, one of us to read it on their behalf. What we'll do is we'll read the, man, the negotiating mandate clause by clause. So let's assume uh, Mr. Uister reads uh, Eastern Cape's mandate. He will read the first proposed amendment from Eastern Cape. Upon reading it, the members together with the law advisors and the department will discuss that proposed amendment from the province. Immediately after discussions have concluded, we will vote whether to accept, reject, or abstain on the matter. Those are the three options available to the province. So once the discussions is finished, I will come in and say, All right, Eastern Cape, do you support, not support, or abstain? That's how we will vote on each amendment for each uh, mandate of the province. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, let's not waste time. Uh, how many provinces did he, they send their mandate for now? All provinces, Chair. Okay. Uh, I will start with the Eastern Cape. Eastern Cape, uh, Dr. Be Bessie. Bessie. Yes, Are you yes. be in the position to read your mandate or we can ask the secretary to read it? Yes, ask the secretary or the chair. Through you. Okay. Ask uh, the Mr. Kubas. Afternoon, Chair. Yes, I am ready to share the mandate on screen and to start reading as the secretary had suggested. Should I proceed? Yes. The Eastern Cape mandate is open and shared. Can I get confirmation that it is working, that it is on screen? Yes. yes. What is that now? My apologies. I have forgotten to put my phone on silent. I do apologize. It's, nobody calls me and then somebody calls me in a meeting. My sincere apologies, Chair. The... Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature, through the chairperson of the Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries Committee, had forwarded a negotiating mandate to the Select Committee on the 29th of September 2020. The vote of the legislature is as follows. The legislature supports the bill and mandates the Eastern Cape delegate to negotiate in favor of the adoption of the bill within the following parameters. I will read the first and then hand over to the department. One, clause 9A. Clause 9-4A seeks to amend section 23 of the act and provides for no mining except for quote on an existing lease or quote any other valid contract end quote this is of utmost concerns as the words quote any other existing contract is subjective vague and could potentially supersede or override the act 
I'm not sure if the department wishes to discuss that point by itself or do, if I need to finish all the comments on section 23. I am awaiting guidance, Chair. Chair. Okay. Uh, Chair is Nyambi. Honorable Nyambi. Yeah, because it's not a lot of stuff. If you can quickly present everything and allow the department to deal with everything. Okay. Okay, I will proceed. Point B. Further, this proposed amendment could be utilized to legitimize current illegal mining operations in state forests as precluded by the Act. Point C. This proposed clause must be redrafted or removed to preclude the legitimizing of illegal activities in protected forests and hence to preserve the environment for generations to come. If this clause is not corrected, the aim of protecting national forests cannot be achieved and can be subject to abuse. Point D, in cases where there are patches of indigenous forest in state forest area, it is recommended that section nine, amendment of section 23, four, clarifies that it is relevant to only those portions that are used for plantation forestry and not applicable to natural forest. And one general point, the report of the portfolio committee attached year two highlights other issues raised by stakeholders relating to the bill before the portfolio committee and are matters that ought to be given consideration by the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. Those reports were forwarded to the department and if the department wishes to comment on those, I am sure they will, but they have all been forwarded to the department. I will now hand over to the department in order to comment on the clauses read. Thank you, Kuobas. Uh, uh, the department, can you deal with the uh, issues that was raised? Oh, no, thank you, Honorable Chair, and Honorable Members and the colleagues. Uh, from our side, maybe just to mention that I would ask Ms. Pumez and Odata to chip in in case I haven't covered all the responses. But from my side, I would appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that we have been given this opportunity. And uh, in terms of our responses, we are agreed with the Eastern Cape, for example, with point one. The concern that the, third, the wedding, any other existing contract creates ambiguity and vagueness. We are agreed with that point and we have uh, revised, we have suggested revised wording to, to exclude reference to any other existing contract. But our uh, such a, our position is that we must, we must maintain reference to on any, on, on an existing lease because we have quite a few lease agreements with uh, several companies, including Safcon. So it would be important for us to cover those existing lease agreements. But we are agreed that the wording any other existing contract creates ambiguity and must be rephrased. So we have, we have suggested wording to, for example, the clause should now read that no person may engage in any prospecting or mining activity in a state forest, except in terms of an existing lease agreement to mine gravel or sand for road maintenance. So this, this alternative wording, which addresses the concern from the Eastern Cape, it removes reference to any other existing contract, uh, but uh, maintains reference to an existing lease agreement because we already have that relationship, the, that existing, that relationship with, with South Coal and other companies. But, but uh, our, our overall intention is to prohibit illegal mining activities in, in our forestry areas without the requisite licenses. So in general, the concern, the, 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 the submission from the Eastern Cape is uh, the, the, five, the four points are interrelated and are all about us not permitting illegal mining activities in forestry areas. But uh, to conclude, Again, we are agreed with the Eastern Cape that we need to remove the wedding, any other existing contract, but we are maintaining that 
on in the wedding on an existing lease must be retained because we have that existing or standing relationship with the with those with those companies, including Safcon. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, sir, um, for outlining. Uh, Aska, what should we do now? Chairperson, you can, it's, it's up to the members before we start voting on the four clauses, because although they are interrelated, they are all four separate. So members must uh, discuss this with the department, the law advisors, and when they are satisfied, we can then vote. Okay, law advisors, can you advise us? What should we do? <clears throat> Greetings, Chairperson. Good, good afternoon, ma'am. It is Pumele Lengema from Legal Services in Parliament. Yes, I, I, I hear what the department is indicating as well as reading what the negotiating mandate suggests. Um, it's a bit unfortunate we didn't get to, to engage on this, but we will find one another and not create problems for the committee. Chairperson, just on, 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 on B, the one that speaks to existing lease agreement and any other valid contract, I was under the impression that the valid contract validates the lawfulness of the contract. So if the department is certain and convinced that if we take out the valid contract, which, which should be lawful in law in any way, and, and nobody would fall outside the scope of what was intended previously when they suggested this provision, I do not have a problem with them saying we can do away with the valid contract and only deal with existing lease agreements. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, ma'am. Any point after the legal advisor? Members, I give to you. Do you want to discuss this uh, mandate? Okay. Okay, Aska. Okay, us. on on clause nine A, we're gonna vote on clause nine A. Eastern Cape support, not support, abstain. Support. Free state. Support, not support, abstain. Free state support. Gauteng, support, Gauteng not support. support. KZN. Gauteng support. Thank you. KZN. KZN support. Yes, Eka. Limpompo. Okay, Mr. Matibe has sent a message to say that um, he is driving and he's also got a bad um, network, so he's unable to participate. He can hear everything, but he's not able to, for now, not able to say anything. Pumalanga, we'll move on to Pumalanga. Support. Support. Northern Cape, they are not present. Northwest. Support. Western Cape is also not present. Um, right, we'll go immediately to 9B, Eastern Cape. Eastern Cape, support. My apologies, you'll have to repeat. Your network is bad. All right, Chair, Eastern Cape, support. Thank you, Free State. Free State is in favor. Thank you, Gauteng. Gauteng, ye casa. Gauteng, support, not support, abstain. 
เขาเจงสังโฆเคยเสด็จเคยเสด็จนายเสกัสซานเออสปอร์ตสปอร์ตสปอร์ตคุณต้องเรียนทุกสิ่งว่ามาฮาซาเอ็นฮาซาเอ็นเอ็นเสกัสเยสทุกอย่างสปอร์ตลิมปงปูฉันกำลังตรวจสอบว่าลิมปงปูกลับออนไลน์ยังไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ Northern Cape is not on the platform. Northwest. Support. Western Northwest Cape support. not on the platform. Thank you, Chair. All right. Nine um, C. Eastern Cape. Support. Free State. Support. Gauteng. Support. KZN. มามองอินจาลโอเคสักทีสักทีสักทีลิมปูปูลิมปูปูไม่อยู่บนแพลตฟอร์มยังมาลังกาสปอร์ตนอร์ทเคฟไม่อยู่บนแพลตฟอร์มนอร์ทเวสต์สปอร์ตเวสต์เคฟไม่อยู่บนแพลตฟอร์มนายน์ดีเวสต์เคฟสปอร์ต Please state in favor. How then? Support. Is it in? Yes, I got started. Support. Support. Uh, Limpopo, are they on the platform? Not yet. Pumalanga. Support. Support. Northern Cape not on the platform. Northwest. In favor. Western Cape not on the platform. Okay, chairperson. For all the all four of the um, clauses by Eastern Cape, nine A, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Chairperson. Order, order, to... order, chairperson. Chair, oh. chairperson. Oh, honourable uh, Nana. Nana, welcome. Uh, Thank you, Chairperson. Ask, I didn't get Mama Bibi correctly. Mama Bibi said, "We are a Sayaka Ask, meaning KZN is opposed." Ah, uh, uh. <laughs> you must correct that, Ask. You got it wrong, Ask. No, no. We are happy now. Come on, Chairman. Welcome, Mundan. Oh, chocolate. Welcome to the chocolate. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Nana. Thanks, Oscar. Chocolate, my motion. Okay, person, Mama, we... um, for all Eastern Cape's amendments, 9A, B, C, and D, we've received six provinces in support. So all four have been accepted. We can now move to Free State. Restate mandate, uh, Honorable Ntube, are you going to read it or uh, we will request the secretary to read your mandate? I, I, su I suggest that the uh, uh, chairperson, the secretary, reads the mandate. Ntate Kuobas? Kuobas, can you read the mandate from Restate? Chair, yes, sorry, I have unmuted my sister now. I have the Free State negotiating mandate in front of me. The date of deliberation was the 9th of October 2020, and the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Rural, Economic Development, Small Business, Sports, Arts, and Culture has forwarded a vote, a negotiating mandate on the National Forestry Bill, where they vote in favour of the bill with the following proposed amendments. Now, these cover different clauses. I will be guided by the committee, but 
it might be better to read a clause and allow for discussion as they are not all related to the same section. Clause one, section two, the meaning of reasonable access must be clarified. The province has proposed that the department must define a reasonable access under the definition clause. Jed, do you wish that I continue or should we break You this? can continue. The department will deal uh, with the summary immediately when we finish read everything. Right, Chair. Clause 2, Section 2A. This clause creates a trusteeship of nation's forestry resources. The recommendation, the clause ensuring that the interests of people practicing customs and traditions would not be hampered as recommended in the case of, oh, my apologies, I cannot pronounce that, sorry, Concorse versus Minister of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries 2018 5 SA 104. My apologies for the pronunciation. Clause four, section eight refers to the word conservation. There is no particular legislation defining what conservation is. The recommendation is that conservation must be defined. Clause seven, section 16, consequential amendment is hereby required. Section 16B must therefore be amended to make sense. The recommendation is that the words, the minister may request the registrar of deeds for the area to make an appropriate, appropriate not must be deleted from section 16B for the, of the principal act. In clause 8B, section 17, this amendment allows for an executive decision to be taken in conflict with the PIA due to the urgency of the decision. The committee believes that due diligence was applied in drafting of this matter. The recommendation, if so, the committee hereby request a copy of the legal opinion. If not, the committee requests that the department to consider this clause. The last recommendation, section 34, the bill is amended to ensure that young people and women are included in the National Forestry Advisory Council. However, the category of people with disability is not covered. And the proposal is the committee recommends that people with disability must also be considered for inclusion in the council. Those are the proposed amendments from Free State as received. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kuoba's department. No, thank you, Honorable Chair and the, and the Honorable Members. Uh, from our side, we appreciate the support of the proposal from the first date. Then in terms of the, the recommendations on the first point, clause one, section two, the defin defining the meaning of reasonable, reasonable access. From our side, we, our position is that we should, we should not define, I mean, we should not fix what is not broken. Uh, over the years, for, from the two decades of more than two decades of us implementing the act, we haven't really experienced challenges with that term specifically. Uh, so we, and really, we really don't support a suggestion for us to define the term reasonable access. Uh, in fact, uh, if you go through the bill, you will notice that that term doesn't exist. We haven't attempted to amend or deal with the term in the bill itself. So there's no reference to the term in the bill uh, as it stands. And in our understanding, you define a concept that is used in the content of the bill. But what we understand is that maybe the, the stakeholder may have went, gone through the act and uh, maybe picked up that, that this term as referenced in the act itself is not defined. But uh, 
in the bill is in the current bill is not is it's not it's not there. So in our view, it would constitute a new amendment, and we would not be in support of that. But in general, the term reasonable access, I think it, it does exist in some legislation. It's used generally, but and it's not defined also in those other pieces of legislation. And in any case, reasonable access, when you look at the principal act, uh, is referenced in relation to making provision for access to state forests for recreation, education, cultural, and spiritual fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So when you talk reasonable access, we talk about those concepts, co concept of recreation, education, culture, and spiritual, spiritual fulfillment. So if minister is to decide on whether a matter was, an, an action was reasonable or not, she will be guided by those parameters. So in a way, the act has already defined the parameters of what would constitute reasonableness with reference to those concepts. Anything that is outside of those concepts will then not be regarded as, as reasonable. But uh, to conclude, Chair, our, point, our, search, our position with this first proposal is that let us not define the term reasonable access. Because we haven't, uh, as I said, we haven't experienced anything and let's not, let's not fix what is not broken. Then uh, with respect to clause 2, two A, um, the clause refer referencing trusteeship of the nation's forestry resources. Uh, the recommendation is that we should take into account the, the issues of customs and customary practices by the people as referenced in Gongosha case. Our, to respond to that one, I uh, would like to state that the, the concept of trusteeship or custodianship of state uh, natural resources, be it land or minerals or other, or other resources, is an internationally recognized principle. Uh, if you can make ref we make reference to the United Nations Resolution 1803, which is all about state permanent sovereignty over natural resources. Basically, what that resolution says, UN Resolution 803, it states that all states have sovereignty or permanent sovereignty over, over their natural resources, minerals, uh, forestry resources, or water resources, and otherwise. So each state has that, that must then exercise that level of control over its natural resources. If it decides to follow a licensing regime, then it must be allowed to do so. If a, if a state decides to follow, a, 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 for example, a leasing regime over its natural resources, then it should be permitted to do so. But then the basic principle is that all states must be accorded that a right to exercise sovereignty over its uh, natural resources. So that's where we then draw that concept from. Uh, uh, for, for in our context, then we, we also want to emphasize that the Forestry Act is infused with those principles of, uh, it recognizes custom, customary practices. For example, why, why I want to, to, to refer members, honorable members to a specific clause, to certain clauses, for example, if you look at clause 26.4, uh, which provide that uh, persons uh, or classes of persons are exempted from the require some requirements of the act or the licensing provision if the intended activity is for domestic, culture, health, or spiritual purposes. So you can see here that the act is infused with those principles of uh, it. I mean, it recognizes. The, the, the interest of communities and especially their customary practices uh, to, the, to an extent that it exempts them from obtaining the necessary licenses if their activities are to promote culture or to practice their cultural, their cultural activities or uh, for domestic purposes. So the act is cognizant of that aspect. And uh, it also recognizes that custom Customs uh, or customary law is recognized in the Constitution, especially if you look at Section 39, 
subsection 3 of the Constitution, which says that no law should deny existence of any other rights or freedoms conferred by customary law or common law. If you look at the Constitution as well, Chapter 12 recognizes the institution of traditional leadership and the customs practiced by those traditional communities. So the Act is consistent with those uh, practices, especially if you look at the section I quoted before, section 246, which exempts communities from obtaining licenses if they are to practice their culture or they are to use resource, forest resources for domestic use. So with respect to this one, Chair, I think we've responded sufficiently. And uh, with reference to the Gwangwashe case, our view is that that case uh, may not be relevant to our context because it was a case decided within the marine level resources space. It dealt with fish access to food, I mean, to fishing rights by uh, communities or fishing rights in communal land. So our view is that that case should it was dealing with a specific matter and it did not in any way create pre a precedent for our context. Therefore, we recognize what the case was all about, but all we are saying is that within what we are proposing is not in any way against customary law or customary practices, but the act instead uh, embraces those practices and uh, uh, creates some accommodation for the people in communities. Then with respect to clause or section eight or clause four, the reference to the definition of the word conservation uh, the suggestion, the recommendation is that that term or the term conservation must be defined. And uh, Chair, Honorable Chair, from our side, we again are saying that let's not fix what is not broken. This term uh, has been there in the law for quite some time, and we haven't really experienced any challenges with it. And we also make a note that if you look at the bill, I think it's only mentioned once or in two places in the bill. So it's not mentioned in any other substantive clause in the bill which would warrant it to be defined. Uh, so on that basis, we don't support it definitely a suggestion that we should define the term conservation. And in law, any term that is commonly used in legislation should then, uh, then uh, attract its definition, its dictionary meaning. So it should, it should be defined as it is known ordinarily. And in fact, if you look at the legislation that would, one would expect that this term is defined, if you look at the biodiversity, biodiversity sector, or the conservation sector, this term is not defined even in those other pieces of legislation. For example, the Biodiversity Act, that term is, is used but not defined. So would, uh, I su suggest that we use or we resort to using the ordinary meaning or the dictionary meaning of that term and not attempt to define it in the act. Because in any event, it's not used that much. It's used in one, one or two places. And uh, so Chair, we are not supporting the definition of the term conservation. Then uh, with respect to clause seven, section 16, uh, the suggestion there is that we then uh, we must delete certain wording from clause 16b of the principal act, as, and this is a this would it is said that this is a consequential amendment. Uh, from our, our side, uh, we where we, we, we are not really supportive of this, of this proposal because firstly, this is not a consequential amendment because what we wanted to understand first what was what is the consequential amendment. In, in, from, in our view, a, conse a, conse a consequential amendment is, a, is when you, you are effecting an amendment to, let's say, to subsequent clauses. Let's say you made an amendment in one clause. Let's say you change is in one clause then there's the same clause in the subsequent clauses of the bill, which require you that we effect the same change in, 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 this, in, in, the, in each clause. To us, that's what would constitute a consequential amendment. 
And for us, this is the only place where they, the, 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 the stakeholder is requesting this amendment. And it is in no way a, sub, a, a consequential amendment in our view. Uh, we submit that the minister has the discretion to decide on wh whether to request the register of this to make an appropriate note in the deed, but but is but is not obliged to do so. So what we are, we are suggest we are uh, putting across is that when we legislate, we don't legislate legislate for the now, but we also legislate for the future eventualities. So although minister made for for now, the minister may not be required to make to give the right directive for the note to be made on the deed. But a, a, a situation may arise in the future where that may be may be required. So we want to give Mr. that element of discretion to be able to then direct the registrar of deeds to effect the note on the deed. So chair. In summary, on that point, we are not supporting the, uh, the proposed amendment. Then on clause 8B, section 17, uh, which is all about PAJA, the recommendation is that the committee requests a legal opinion or a reconsideration of the clause. Basically, this clause is about the, it's an emergency clause minister must be able to act in cases of emergency without really uh, following the requisite consultation processes uh, to, in the interest of protecting the, the forestry resources or the destruction or deforestation. So if one is to then put some onerous processes before minister decides, then it means that that you remove that element of emergency from the situation. Uh, our view is that I mean this 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 approach is not a new concept. For, it's not a new approach. For example, within the criminal law context, there is a general principle that one should. I'm just making an example here. One should not enter a property without a search warrant. So that's the general mm -hmm. principle, but there are exceptions to say a police official can enter in, 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 in a, a premise without a search warrant if they are, if circumstances justify that the police officer enters the property. For example, if there's a risk that the, the, the potential, the, the, the person will then destroy the, the evidence, then the police must be able to then enter the property without a search, warrant, a search warrant. So for each general principle, there's always exceptions. For this one is one of those exceptional cases where we say the general principle is that PAJA requirements of consultation must be followed. But then in this instance, it would not make sense for minister to undertake a consultation process because by the time that process is concluded, the forestry resources would have been destroyed or they would the deforestation would have occurred. So this is to cater for those special occasions or exceptional circumstances where minister would be required to take those urgent steps or actions. But what we will find in the bill is that we still the bill says still makes provision for an after the fact consultation process, meaning that minister can take that abrupt step to say stop cutting certain trees uh, now, but then follow a, a consultation process later, which will then, a um, minister will then have a right to go back and revoke that decision, amend it, uh, or confirm it at a later stage. So the element of consultation is not, uh, is still maintained, but then it must, in this case, it must be done after the fact. I'm hoping I'm clear, Chair, on this one. So on this one, in summary, we are not. We still maintain that minister must have that authority to act in those emergency situations and not follow the patcher process. But what we are emphasizing is that that provision in the bill says after the minister has acted, minister can still go back and say and consult 
and uh, review her decision at a later stage. Then on clause 10, section 34, uh, there is a proposal, the, the recommendation is that we should then cater for the interest of young people and women. And uh, Chair, we are supporting this proposal without any reservation. Thank you, Chair. Oh. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Uh, go back to you, Aska, for on voting. Oh, before Aska, can 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 we get a clar another clarity from state that uh, state law advisor or legal advisor, Sis Mkumza? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Madam Chairperson. Um, in total, I am in agreement with the views of the department and the explanation. I just want to add two or three, Chairperson. Um, in case of the reasonable definition and con conservation, even if we were to, to consider that it's necessary that we effect those, I just wanted to point out to the committee that then that will invoke NCOP rule 1691B, where we will still have to require permission from the house in order to deal with changes that have not been part of the bill as introduced because this bill amends an existing principal act. Um, and then Chairperson on the trusteeship, I'm, 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 I'm satisfied, I won't even touch there. And then on, on, on the issue, on the issue of the, the, the PAJA as well, Chairperson, I think the department justified the explanation as well as explaining that this is a restricted situation where an agency has occurred and therefore the minister need to make a declaration. And so that would be a restricted period for when that declaration mm -hmm. exists and with the justification which can be presented, then it does fall perfectly within the ambit of, of, the, of the Administrative of Justice Act and ensuring that um, people's right to administrative actions are protected and not impacted without consideration. The last one, Chairperson, is on the, the, the one on clause 10, which is, is also to add uh, um, the, the, the people living with disabilities. And my understanding is that if the committee agrees with that, and then, then that one will be the only one that has to go onto the C list if the bill is, is amended after the deliberations of the committee. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, ma'am. Uh, Now we, uh, I'm giving you back to you, Aska, after the clar uh, legal advisor clarify that if we amend, it means we uh, will be going back to the parliament to request. So it's up to the members to say, are they support <clears throat> or reject, uh, except the last one. Uh, the one for uh, people living with disability, but it's up to the members. Aska? Thank you, Chair. Clause one, Eastern Cape? Not support. Free State? Free State support? Houteng? Houteng support? KZN? KZN supports. Limpopo. Limpopo is not on the platform yet. It's in. Uma, uh, but uh, I've seen, I've seen that the But he's unable to 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 communicate with us as yet, chairperson. Oh, okay. Um, Pumalanga. Support. Northern Cape is not on the platform. Northwest. Plus number number one, eh? not support. Western Cape is uh, 
not on the platform, close to Eastern Cape? Eastern Cape, not support, close to. Hmm. Free State? Free State supports, Chair. Houten? Houten supports, Chair. KZN? KZN supports, sir. In Pompo, cannot make Pumalanga abstain. <laughs> Northern Capes not on the platform. Northwest, Northwest not support or <laughs> abstain. Let me say I'm abstaining. Okay, abstaining. Western Cape, not on the platform. Close four. Eastern Cape. Eastern Cape support, close four. Free State. Chair, Free State supports. How then? How then support? KZN. KZN supports, eh? Limpompo, not on the platform to speak yet. Pumalanga. Abstain. <laughs> Northern Cape, <laughs> not on the platform. Northwest. <laughs> Yo, uh, uh. Northwest. Oh, Northwest. Uh, not support. Wait, wait. What loss? Four. Close four. Close four. No, no, no. Uh, abstain. Abstain. Mm. Western Cape's not on the platform. Close seven. Eastern Cape. Eastern. Support this one. My um, apologies, Doctor Basie. Could you just report that? Uh, repeat that vote, please. Yes. Eastern Cape support, Honourable Chair. Support. Free State. Free State. Chair, we we Free State support for for for. Future people, which I think because we are the one who made the recommendation, I think automatically we must just tick a as a as a in favor of bro the recommendation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh how ten support. You forgot the KZN. KZN. KZN support, Sean. Limpopo. Limpopo can make Pumalanga. Support. Northern Cape, not on the platform. Northwest. Northwest support. Limpopo. Western Cape, not on the platform. Limpopo is in, in. Yes, but they cannot, they are not able to make a vote yet, Chair. Mr. Matibe has sent me a message to say he's in and off, he's on the, on the signal. Okay. Um, close 8B. 8B. Eastern Cape. Conservation must be Eastern Cape support. Free state. Free state support. Houten. Houten support. KZN. KZN support. Limpopo. Limpopo supports. Okay, Mr. Matip is back online. Thank you. Support. Pumalanga. 
support. Northern Cape's not on the platform. Northwest. Support. Western Cape's not on the platform. Then we come to the last. The last clause would be clause 10. Eastern Cape. Clause 10. Eastern Cape, do you support, not support, abstain? Support. Free State? Support. Gauteng? Support. KZN? Support, Chairperson. Limpompo? Limpompo supports. Pumalanga? Support. Northern Capes, not on the platform. Northwest? Yeah, no, this one is support full force. Western Capes, not on the platform. Okay, Chairperson, out of the one, two, three, four, five, six, out of the six proposed amendments from the Free State Province, Clause 1, we had one, two, three, Four provinces support, two provinces not support. So that clause was not recommended. Clause two, we had three provinces support, one not support, two abstain. That one was not accepted. Clause four, we had four provinces support and two abstain. So that one was not accepted. Clause seven, we had six provinces support. So that one was accepted, was clause seven was accepted, Chairperson, because it takes five provinces to agree. Mm -hmm. We had six. Clause eight B, we had seven provinces supporting so the 8b is accepted by the committee and as well as clause 10 7 so the that one was accepted chairperson thank so you very we, much Aska. so we can move on to gauteng chair uh, the mandate from gauteng uh, mamgwenya are you going to be in the position to read or uh, we can give to the secretary to read it. Thanks, Chair. Let the secretary read it. Okay. Mr. Kubas. Thank you, Chair. The Gauteng Legislature forwarded the negotiating mandate to the committee after deliberating on the 8th of October 2020. The vote of the legislature is supporting the National Forest Amendment Bill subject to the recommendation below being considered. The four following recommendations will be read. First, the department must ensure that the forestry resources together with the land and related ecosystems which they inhabit are protected, conserved, developed, regulated, managed, controlled, and utilized in a sustainable and equitable manner for the benefit of all persons and in accordance with the constitutional and developmental mandate of government. The department must ensure that the unnecessary deforestation is prohibited. The department must also make sure that steps be taken by the minister in the case of non-compliance with a notice issued by the minister directing an owner to take steps in order to prevent deforestation and ensure rehabilitation of natural forests and woodlands. The department must also be responsible for the creation of a comprehensive regulatory framework through policies and legislation to improve sustainable forest management in the country. That is the four points put forward by the Gauteng Legislature Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Aska. Thank you, Chairperson. The mandate from Gauteng 
is there are no proposed amendments. These are merely recommendations to be considered by the department. The department still, however, has to respond to this mandate, yes. uh, but we don't have to vote on this because these are not uh, proposed amendments. These are merely recommendations to be considered by the department chair. Thank you very much, uh, department. No, thank you, honorable chair and honorable members. Well, I think from the department, we appreciate the, the support from Gauteng legislature and in terms of our response to the, the uh, general comments on the bill, on number A, uh, we are fully agreed with that comment. In fact, we're not just agreed, but we wanted to mention a few sections where we wanted we, de we are demonstrating that we are already uh, doing what the province is suggesting. With the first point, we are already the act already has provisions to cater for the suggestion. For example, in section nine, in section nineteen of the principal act makes provision for access to state forests for purposes of recreation, education, culture, and spiritual fulfillment. Uh, I think I also mentioned before section 26.4, which exempts person, certain persons or class of persons from getting the requisite licenses if their activities are to, are to are for domestic use to then fulfill their cultural needs, health or spiritual or spiritual purposes. So the act already has those kind of provisions uh, which are aimed at ensuring sustainable uh, uh, management of our natural resources. Uh, in terms of the point B, which says the department must ensure that unnecessary, for, unnecessary frustration is prohibited. We are fully agreed with that uh, suggestion or recommendation. And we wanted to emphasize that we're already ensuring that unnecessary deforestation doesn't happen through various provisions in the in the in the act. Uh, we're making reference in this instance to section 17, which empowers the minister to then declare an area as a controlled forest area. Uh, if minister is of the view that the the steps, the necessary steps are required to prevent deforest, further deforestation of the area. So the, there's already those important provisions in the Act. And on point C, uh, uh, on that one also, we were saying that we've already catered for that in the Act. If you look at section 17, subsection 3 and 4, there are already sufficient providers there to address issues of non-compliance. In fact, Minister is, is empowered to then take reasonable steps to, to remedy any non, uh, instances of non-compliance, uh, to recover damages or costs from the owner, uh, uh, as, and also to, if necessary, to take matters up with the competent courts to ensure compliance with the provisions of the Act. So, Chair, in, 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 to conclude, we are appreciative of the uh, suggestions from Kauteng and we are fully supportive of, of, of saying thanks. Sir. Thank you very much, uh, Department. I don't think uh, this one we will need the, because there they are no amendment uh, legal advisor to assist us if, but I don't think because there's no amendment. Aska? No, 100% correct, Chairperson. Thank you, ma'am. Aska? Chair, yeah, we can move to KZN. Are we not accepting this mandate? The whole committee. The, no, I think, Chairperson, I think for now, we are just voting for amendments. They are coming for voting. Oh, for oh, okay, okay. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Kezaden, Momo, are you going to read or uh, ask her to read for you? No, thanks, Chairperson. I would like uh, the Secretary 
to read it for me. Thank you. Mr. Kubas. Thank you, Chair. I have the mandate from the KZN legislature open in front of me. The deliberation was the 22nd of October 2020, and the vote of the legislature, legislature is as follows. The portfolio Apolog committee... Apologies, Corpus, you, you don't have it on screen. Um, sorry. Apologies for interrupting you. No, that's yeah. not a problem. I thought I had been sharing that one on screen, so I'm just trying to get my whole profile back. Why have I lost the ability to share? There we go. My apologies. I thought jumping between my screens would get you the whole document shared. And I seem to have lost my ability to scroll. Can you, Aska, can you see this one as it is now in front yes. of me? The yes, Portfolio sir. Committee on Conservation and Environmental Affairs met today, Thursday, the 22nd of October 2020, and agreed to manage the, to mandate the KwaZulu Natal delegation to support the National Forest Amendment Bill, Bill B11B of 2016 with the following proposed amendments as outlined in the committee report attached to year two. If you would just allow me to go and fetch that because it's a different document. So I'll stop sharing and I will retrieve. The Committee sent a combined document that has got comments for both the National Forestry Amendment Bill as well as the Environmental Management Laws Amendment Bill. I will scroll down immediately to the section for National Forestry Amendment Bill. It, it contains a narrative that, in the interest of time, unless it has to be read. I will scroll through down to the beginning of the proposed amendments. So after consultation, the following amendments are proposed. A, although the proposed amendment to the definitions is welcome, more clarity may still be achieved by improving further on the definition as follows. Woodland means a group of indigenous trees which are not a natural forest, encompassing any area defined as a woodland vegetation type in the official national vegetation classification or a specialist botanical survey or report, but whom crowns, whose crowns cover more than, insert, at least 5% of the area bounded by trees forming the perimeter of the group, as an insertion, they occupy and which may in a degraded state have a crown cover or of less than 5%. B, the challenges relating to section 17.2 are not rectified completely by the proposed amendment as reference is still made to a natural forest or a woodland protected under section 12.1. This places a severe restriction on which woodlands would qualify for a controlled forest area, as Recording such a woodland stopped. would first have to be declared a protected woodland under section 12. The minister should be able to intervene in any instance a woodland is being deforested, irrespective of whether it has been declared under Section 12.1. The amendment should thus read, a natural forest or Recording woodland in progress. which is threatened by deforestation, end quote, and the reference to protection under Section 12.1 should be removed. Point C, the definition of destruction of natural forests. Section 3 provides 
that natural forests may not be destroyed save in exceptional circumstances as for a new land use. However, there is no clarity on what is meant by destruction of natural forests. This creates a compliance and enforcement challenge as developers currently claim that Section 3 does not apply to their project as destruction of natural forest means destroying more of a forest than what they are aiming to destroy. Accordingly, the term should be defined as destruction of natural forests means any action where one or more mature trees in the natural forest is felled or caused to die and or undergrowth is removed for the purpose of change in land use. Point D, the term new land use in section three could also be understood as a land use regulated by town planning laws, allowing one to argue that section three does not apply to some developments because they already have a zoning approval. The term new land use should therefore be defined and the proposed definition is New land use means any human activity leading to the use of land which would require the removal of natural forest, which is not restricted to land uses requiring land use approval, zoning, or rezoning. That is the end of recommendations related to the forest rebuild currently under consideration, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kubas, department. No, thank you, honorable chair and uh, honorable members. Uh, with regards to case at N, we also appreciate the support uh, they're offering on the bill. And uh, the uh, proposal are mainly on the on the definitional issues. It's all about definitions. But the first one, paragraph A, the definition of woodland. Uh, on this one, we uh, our position is that we really are of the view that the current definition in the bill is, is, is adequate. Uh, but noting the amendments, they are referring to certain documents which are not really under the control of the departments. For example, there's reference to the National Vegetation Classification or a Specialist Bot Botanical Survey Report. But uh, we would appreciate the, um, an amendment, but to the extent that the proposal from KZN refer references those documents which are not within our control, we are not supporting that, that the proposal to that extent, but we have tried to then come up with a an alternative definition which addresses some of the concerns raised without referring to documents that are outside of our control. For example, our the, the alternative definition that we are, we are suggesting for consideration is that woodlands should mean a group of indigenous trees which are not natural forests, but whose crowns cover at least 5% of the area they occupy and which may, in a degraded state, have a crown cover of less than 5% or be any vegetation type declared by the minister to be a woodland by noticing the gazette. So you will notice that in B, we are giving minister that leeway to make a determination with, uh, in terms of defining a, wood, a woodland, as well as the suggestion from KZN. So uh, to summarize on this point, we ask up, we, we our, in, our initial view was that the, in, the definition in the bill is fine, but then having gone through the proposal from KZN, we are noting that there may be a need for some amend for a revision, but we are not supporting a revision that includes reference to other documents that are not within our control. So what we're proposing is this alternative definition, which, which we feel, which in our view caters for the concerns for, for, from KZN and gives minister some uh, leeway to then through a gazette determine uh, what would constitute a woodland. 
Then with uh, the second proposal, in summary, that the, the, the recommendation is that we might we must remove the reference to protection under Section Twelve One of the of the Forest Act. And after having gone through the act, we just wanted to uh, sensitize the committee that the, the Forest Act was amended in 2005, and the reference to Clause 12.1, as, as contained in the stakeholder input, was 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 deleted in the with the 2005 amendment. So there is no reference, no longer reference to Section 2.1 of the Forest Act, as that part was. Uh, removed by the 2005 amendment. So uh, with this round of amendments, there's no need for us to effect any further amendment. Then with point number three, the definition of destruction of natural forests, uh, we welcome this proposal uh, of a definition of destruction of natural forests. Uh, but we just wanted to suggest a few amendments. I mean, a few, if just minor changes. Uh, for example, to say destruction of natural forest should then mean any action where one or more mature trees in a mature in a natural forest is felled or caused to die, or to or the undergrowth removed for the purpose of land use or resource use. So all we're doing here here is just to insert the wording resource use. So we uh, we welcome the, the, the suggestion, the proposed definition, but we are just inserting that small uh, uh, waiting resource use so that the, the definition is complete. But our concern here on this one is that this definition is not in the bill. So it's not catered for in the current version of the bill. So that's our only concern. But in general, we support the definition with the inclusion of that small uh, addition of the wedding resource use at the end. Then the, I think this is the last one, definition of new land use. Also on this one, we support this definition, uh, but then we are generally concerned that the, the term is not contained in the current version of the bill, but then we'll, we'll leave it to the committee to decide whether to include it or not. But we are, is, we are supporting the definition. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Sir. Uh, legal advisor. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I'm good on this one. I have no additions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oscar. Oscar. Asta? Hi, can, Chairperson, can you hear me? Yes. Sorry about that. Uh, seems like my laptop also has gremlins and my voice. Um, mm -hmm. KZN, um, um, can we just go up to the first point A? Right. Point A. So we'll be voting on the woodland means a group of indigenous trees. We'll be voting on that one. Eastern Cape. Honorable Doctor. Doctor Bess. Eastern Cape, not support. Okay. Um, Dr. Bessie? You still keep not support. Uh, who's speaking on behalf of Eastern Cape? It's Dr. Bess. Uh, he's not on the platform anymore. No, he just he's... left now. Okay. 
Okay, Eastern Cape, um, not support. Free State. Honorable Ntube, Woodland. Free State. Free State. Honorable Ntube. It seems he's, a, uh, he's having a problem of network. Honorable Ntube. Chair, I've said free state support. Okay. Counting. Mom, uh, Mom Gwenya. How thank support? Can you hear me, Chair? Yes, yes. thank you. Can you okay. Obvious. You put my corner there. Can you then support? I'm back again, Honorable Chair, Eastern Cape. Okay, I had you a were, problem. Yes, you were recorded as not supporting. Yes, yes, okay, okay. thank you. Lim thank Limpopo. You. Mr. Matibe. Network problem. Yeah, bro. Okay, network problem. Um, Pumalanga. Support. Northern Cape, not on the platform. Northwest. Uh, Woodland, no. Uh, abstain. Abstain. Western Cape's not on the platform. Um, we now go to close B. Eastern Cape. Dr. Bese. Dr. Bese. Uh, not support. Okay, not support. Free state. Okay. Free state. Um, Honorable Ntube, we can hear you. Say it again. Uh, are you supporting or not? Or you are abstaining? Okay, I'm not getting a vote from Free State. Gauteng. Gauteng support. KZN. KZN support. Limpompo. Chair, I'm battling with network here. Yeah, free State is in support. Okay, Free State support. My apologies. No yes. Limpompo. Okay. Malanga. Abstain. Northern Capes, not on the platform. Northwest. Not support. Not support. Not, not support. Western Cape, not on the platform. Um, C. Definition of destruction of natural forests. Eastern Cape. Support. Eastern Cape supports. Free State. 
Support. Free State Support. Gauteng. Gauteng Support. KZN. KZN Support. Limpopo. Okay. Pumalanga. Abstain. Northern Cape, not on the platform. Northwest. Abstain. Western Cape, not on the platform. Then the final one, uh, D. Wilbur, can we just go down to D, please? Okay, the new land use. Okay, Eastern Cape. Eastern Cape support, honorable chair. Free State. Free State. I know Mr. Zub is on the line. I'll continue. We can always come back to him when he's when he's able to speak. How thing? How thing? How thing support? KZN support stay mandated. KZN support Limpopo. Walanga. Upstate. Northern Cape, not on the platform. Northwest. Yeah, free state, free state, yeah. Free state. Free state sub yes, free state supports. Support. Northwest. Abstain. Abstain. Western Cape, not on the platform. Thank you, members. Uh, KZN had four proposed amendments. Number A. Amendment A, we only had four supporting, one not supporting, one abstention, did not go through. Uh, B, we had three supporting, one not supporting, two, I'm sorry, two not supporting, one abstention, did not go through. C, We had four provinces supporting, two abstentions, did not go through. D, we had four provinces supporting, two abstentions, so that one also did not go through. Uh, we can now move on to the Limpopo mandate. Thank you. Limpopo mandate, as you know, uh, Honorable Madib, Matibe is battling with uh, a network. Can you read the mandate, uh, Mr. Gubas? Chair, yeah, I've got it open in front of me. The negotiating mandate was received from the Limpopo legislature after deliberation on the 8th of October 2020. The vote of the legislature is as follows. The provincial NCRP permanent delegate is to negotiate in favor of the bill with the proposed amendments. The following proposed amendments were supplied with the mandate. Clause one, section one definitions, new land use. New definition means any human activity leading to the use of land which would require the removal of natural forest, which is not restricted to land uses requiring land use approval or zoning. Woodland, new definition, any area defined as woodland vegetation type in the official national vegetation classification. Destruction of natural forests, new definition, any action where one or more mature trees in a natural forest is felled or caused to die 
and or more mature trees in a natural undergrowth is removed for the purpose of land use. Those are, although it refers only to the one clause, it, it appears as if there are three new definition references in the Lepoha negotiation mandate. It is there for the committee to discuss and for the department to discuss, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. S uh, Kubas, uh, department. Thank you, Honorable Chair and the Honorable Members. From our side, we note that the three definitions uh, are almost the same as uh, Umalanga. Mm. But then to start with the first one, the new land youth. Uh, as we stated before, we are supporting this definition, the proposal, but our only concern is that it's not in the current version of the bill but we'll leave it to the committee to decide, but we are supporting the definition. The, the second one on woodland, the definition of, of the term woodland, uh, again here, we were supporting some, some, some adjustment to the definition, but to the extent that the, the definition, the, the proposal references documents that are not within our control. We are, we are, we are not supporting that. Uh, instead, we are proposing an alternative definition, which uh, reads as follows. Woodlands means a group of indigenous trees which are not natural forests, but whose crowns cover at least 5% of the area they occupy and which may, in a degraded state, have a crown cover of less than 5% or any vegetation type declared by the minister to be a woodland by noticing the gazette. So this is the definition we are putting across for for adoption. As uh, and it, this why this this version then caters for all the concerns raised by the by the province. Then on the last one, the definition of the term. Destruction of natural destruction of natural forest. Again, here we are supporting the definition, but making just making a slight amendments uh, to say destruction of natural forest means any action where one or more ma mature trees in a natural forest is felled or caused to die, or the undergrowth removed for the purposes of land use or resource use. All we are doing here is to just insert the word, the word resource use towards the end of the proposal. We are supporting this proposal, but uh, even here we are concerned that it was not part of the or the current version of the bill. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sibusiso. Uh, legal advisor. Once again, Chairperson, all in order. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Askam. Chairperson, we can vote. There's three amendments. The um, can can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, the first amend the first definition new land use. That was the first definition. Eastern Cape. Support. Support. Free state. First state is in favor. How ten? How ten support? KZN. KZN support. 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 Chair. Doctor Bese, you were saying. Ivory. Um, yes, I've recorded Eastern Cape as support. Seeing that this is Limpopo's mandate, they would be in support of their own um, mandate. Kumalanga. Support. 
Northern Cape is not on the platform. Northwest. Airport. Western Cape is not on the platform. Um, the second definition, Woodland. Um, Eastern Cape. Eastern Cape. Okay, I think they're having a network issue. Let's go to Free State. Free State supports. Houting. Houting support. KZN. KZN supports. Limpopo, this is their mandate. Pumalanga. Support. Northern Cape's not on the platform. Northwest. Not sub, uh, abstaining. The one for Woodland, ne? Yes, Chair. Yes. Okay, and Western Cape's not on the platform. Then the last definition, the structure of natural forests. Okay, let's go back to Woodlands because Eastern Cape did not give us an answer. Let's see if they're back online. Eastern Cape. Okay, they're not, they're not online. Um, right, this, the last um, proposed amendment, Eastern Cape. Free State. Free State support. How ten? How ten support? KZN. KZN supports. Pumalanga. Support. Northern Cape on the platform. Northwest. Northwest. Oh, yes. Support. Support. I'll go back to Eastern Cape to see if they're back on the platform. Eastern Cape. Nope, they're not on the platform. Okay, Chairperson. Um, Limpopo's um, proposed amendments. The first the definition. Received seven provinces supporting it. That one was accepted. The Woodlands, one, two, three, four, five provinces um, accepted. One abstained. So that one's accepted. Members, Dr. Bess is back on the, on the platform. It would be up to the committee. Members. Give him an opportunity. I was about to ask that, sir. Um, Dr. Bese, the Eastern Cape's um, vote on the definition of woodland, do you support or not support? John, are you there? What about you? Yes. Yes. I think he's Dr. Bese? Lost. He's lost signal again. Okay. Um, the last definition was supported by one, two, three, four, five, six provinces. So all three definitions were accepted from the Limpopo province. We can now move to the Mpumalanga. Chairperson and members, if you would just give me one minute indulgence, I just would like to look at the membership and just to see if we're still correct. Give me one minute, please. Thank you very much, members. We're still correct. Thank you. Uh, Chairperson, we can move on to the Mpumalanga uh, mandate. Um, Mr. Nyambi can read it or instruct uh, one of us to read it on his behalf. Thank you, Chair. 
Secretary can read. Secretary can read. Mr. Kubas. Thanks, Chair. The negotiating mandate received from the Mpumalanga Provincial Legislature was received after deliberation on the 12th of October 2020. The vote of the Legislature is that the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Rural Development, Land and Environmental Affairs supports the National Forest Bill B11B 2016 and confers on the permanent delegate representing the province of Mpumalanga in the National Proven Council of Provinces a mandate to vote in favour of the bill with proposed amendments as contained in the committee report. I just need to stop sharing the PDF and open the committee report, which is a separate document. The report received by or from the portfolio committee in the Mpumalanga Provincial Legislature provides a very detailed background as to individuals that gave inputs and the process followed with the inputs from stakeholders only captured from page 13 onwards. Chair, if the committee would allow me to start on page 13, I can read only the inputs received and not the, the explanation of the process as followed. Is that acceptable, Chair? Come again. Chair, the document contains about 13 pages of narrative before we reach the actual inputs from stakeholders. I'm requesting permission from the committee chair to start reading only the inputs received from stakeholders, therefore to start on page 13 of the document covering the actual amendments proposed and not read the entire narrative that goes before it. Yeah, you can read yeah, them. Deal with the amendment. Okay. I, I on, the, on the bottom of page 13, the input starts with the following. The stakeholders who were part of the public hearing made the following submissions. A, Ashley Daw, Endangered Wildlife Trust, supported amendments. Part four, proposed amendments to the National Forest Amendment Bill. The proposed definition of natural forest is supported as it is a substantial improvement on the current definition, which could have applied to dense woodlands or thickets. And this concern is now partially addressed by refining the definition to include diagnostic species. The inclusion of diagnostic fauna moves the definition from a tree focused approach to a more inclusive ecosystem approach. This can assist in the practical implementation of identifying natural forests and resolving cases where there is a dispute over whether a natural forest is affected by human actions. We strongly urge that guidelines be developed to inform decisions on natural forests as diagnostic species associated with natural forest could also occur in thicket or dense woodland. In this instance, consideration will then need to be given to which non-diagnostic species occur in association with diagnostic species and their abundance. The new proposed definition also addresses the issue of whether new growth forests or degraded forests can be considered to be natural forest more decisively, and this is welcome. The proposed definition of woodland also addressed the issue of degraded woodlands that should be considered to be a woodland. And while this is supported, the full definition does present some challenges, including what size area would one look at for the 5% cover if the tree cover occurs in clumps? What does the term area mean in this context? Could the area between clumps with no tree cover then be considered not to be woodland? Proposed inclusions on the bill. 
we propose the definition include the following wording to resolve the above challenges. Quote, the term woodland also encompasses any area defined as a woodland vegetation type in the official national vegetation classification or a specialist botanical survey report. End of quote. We, we strongly support it, the proposed addition of any other vegetation to section seven and the proposed additions to section 23.4. The challenges relating to section 17.2 are not rectified completely by the proposed amendment as reference is still made to a natural forest or a woodland protected under section 12.1. This place is a severe restriction on which woodlands would qualify for a controlled forest area, as such a woodland would first have to be declared a protected woodland under Section 12. The Minister should be able to intervene in any instance a woodland is being deforested, irrespective of whether it has been declared under Section 12.1. The amendment should thus read, a natural forest or woodland which is threatened by deforestation and the reference to protection under section 12.1 should be removed. In addition to our comments above, we have also included concerns that have not been addressed in the proposed amendments to the National Forests Act as provided for in the National Forest Amendment Bill. These are I, the definition of destruction of natural forests. Section three provides that natural forests may not be destroyed save in exceptional circumstances for a new land use. However, there is no clarity on what is meant by destruction of natural forest. This creates a compliance and enforcement challenge as developers currently claim that section three does not apply to their project as destruction of natural forests means destroying more of a forest than they are aiming to destroy. Accordingly, the term should be defined as destruction of natural forest amounts to any action where one or more mature trees in a natural forest is felled or caused to die and or undergrowth is removed for the purpose of change in land use. This will require anyone wishing to destroy natural forest for a new land use to apply for a section seven license and they would have to prove exceptional circumstances for the granting of the license. I, I, the term new land use in section three could also be understood as land use regulated by town planning laws allowing one to argue that section three does not apply to some developments because they already have a zoning approval. The term new land use should be defined and the proposed definition is any human activi activity leading to the use of land which would require the removal of natural forest, which is not restricted to land uses requiring land use approval or zoning. Then observations and findings by the committee. The committee found that generally the stakeholders and members of the public supported the bill, but made proposals for further amendments on the bill. The recommendations of the committee, the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Rural Development, Land and Environmental Affairs records that in order to avoid unnecessary amendments of the National Forest Act's Inputs made by the stakeholders at this stage should be considered and be reasonably incorporated in the proposed National Forest Amendment Bill. And the conclusion, the chairperson wishes to thank the honorable members, all members of the public for their worthwhile participation in the public hearing and for the inputs or comments they have made. Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries and all stakeholders for their efforts in ensuring that the committee meets its obligation and the support staff who contributed to the success of the public hearing and production of this report. That is the end of the report. I will do my best to try and keep up with scrolling between the pages as the discussions uh, unfold. Chair, thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kovas, the department. Department, respond on Honourable the issues Chair, that was you. raised. No, thank you, Honorable Chair and the, and the members. Uh, from the side of the department, we, we uh, again appreciate the support from Pumalanga. And uh, on clause one, section two, we note the, the province's support for the definition of natural, of natural, of natural forest uh, without reading through the, the comments there. We also note the suggestion that we need to develop guidelines. Uh, so Chair, in summary, on this point, that first point, we are agreed that there will be guidelines developed to further support the interpretation and implementation of, of the of the bill. In fact, before the guidelines, we will first develop regulations, and then uh, the regulations will be complemented by the guidelines. So we are agreed. We are supporting that first suggestion about the development of guidelines. Uh, still on clause one, subsection two. The Again, there is this uh, proposal that we define the, the term woodland. Uh, there is, we revise the term wood, woodland. Uh, again, here as a, depart as a department, we feel that the current definition in the bill is adequate, but we, we, are, we are open to revision of the definition uh, to then uh, <clears throat> give minister some discretion through a gazette to determine what would constitute uh, to further refine the definition of, 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 uh, of woodland. So on this one, Chair, we are generally supporting the proposal, but we are not supporting it to the extent that it, 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 it attempts to, to reference documents that are not within our control. For example, there's a reference again to the official national vegetation classification or a, a botanical survey or report. Again, we are saying those documents are not within our control. They are not consulted with the public uh, and uh, they are not documents that should be elevated to the status of legislation. <clears throat> so, so we are supporting that, the, the revision, uh, but only to the extent that minister is allowed through a gazette to then make a declaration as to what would constitute a woodland as and when the need arises. So on clause uh, eight, section 17, I think on this one, we've addressed it before to say section 12, subsection one of the act has been amended by the uh, 2005 amendment. So basically section 12, one has been removed so there's no need for us to make any further amendments or, 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 or in respect of this clause. Then on clause three, section seven, uh, the proposal is that we need to include a definition of destruction of natural forests. And from the side of the department, we are supporting this definition but subject to a minor addition uh, to say that the destruction of natural forest should mean any action where one or more mature trees in a natural forest is felled or caused to die or the undergrowth removed for the purposes of land use or resource use. Or, so here we're just inserting the word resource use at the end, resource use at the end of that proposed definition. We're supporting this definition uh, but our concern is that uh, it's not contained in the original version of the bill, in the current version of the bill. The next definition, again, the definition of land use, we're supporting this definition uh, as it is, but our concern is that it's not in the current version of the bill. But we'll leave it to the committee to then agree or to discuss whether to, or to adopt it or not. Thank you, Sir. Thank you very much, the department. Uh, for now, the legal advisor is not in the uh, platform. Uh, she will come back later. Aska? Aska? 
Yes, sure. Um, I think uh, Ms. Ngema is back on the platform. I'm just going to double check with her. Pumalele? Oh, Ms. Ngema. Uh... She went to fetch her kids. Yeah. Um, she did indicate she was back. Okay. It will be, okay. um, will be up to the chairperson. Shall I continue with the voting? Yes. Okay, chairperson. Um, number eight, um, page 14, number 18. That was a definition of natural forest. Um, Eastern Cape. Dr. BSM. Is it first aid, Chair? No, it's... Uh, uh, okay. Eastern Cape. Eastern, Eastern Cape. Okay, we can always come back again because he is yes. on the platform. Free state. Free state is in favor. Support. How ten? How ten support? KZN. KZN support. Limpombo. Not Pumalanga. Okay, Pumalanga. Pumalanga support. Northern Cape's not on the platform. Northwest. Another support. Western Cape's not on the platform. Eastern Cape, are you back online? Okay, then we'll move to uh, point number 19. That was the proposed definition of woodland. Eastern Cape. Eastern Cape support. I had a serious uh, problem of network or uh, apologies. Yes. No, no it's, it, we have got a thunderstorm. Yeah, it's raining too much. Yeah. Dr. Bessie, the yeah, first oh, yeah, one support, did you yes. support? Did you support the first one as well? Okay, that was a support on the second one. Free State? Free State support. How then? Okay. Mama. Mama Ngwei. Sorry, Chair. How do you support? KZN. KZN support. Limpa Umpo. Nope. Pumalanga. Pumalanga support. Northern Cape not on the platform. Northwest. Support. Okay. Number. Number, number, 90. <clears throat> number 20 was the support. Uh, any other vegetation as 20. Um, Eastern Cape. Free State. Free State supports. How ten? Mama Nguyen. How ten support? KZN. KZN support. Yes, sir. Limpopo. Pumalanga. Support. Northern Cape, not on the press. Northwest. Support. We support. Okay. okay. And then 22I. The definition of destruction of natural forest. That was 22I. Um, Eastern Cape. Free State. First aid is in favor. How 
How can support? KZN. Uh, KZN support. Limpompo. Pumalanga. Support. Support. Northern Cape, not on the platform. Northwest. Support. Western Cape, not on the platform. That would make the last one 22, Roman 2. And land, new land use. Eastern Cape. Free State. Free State support. Support. How can? How can support? Support. KZN. KZN support. Limpopo. Nothing. Pumalanga. Support. Northwest. Support. Western Cape not on the platform. Okay. Pumalanga had one, two, three, four, five proposed amendments. The first one was five provinces supported. That was number 18. Number 19, we have uh, six provinces supported. Number 20, we had five provinces supported. 22, Roman 1, five provinces support. 22, Roman 2, five provinces support. All Pumalanga's proposed amendments have gone through. Now put M N Northern Cape. Northern Cape would be the next uh, mandate chairperson. Yes, um, Northern Cape. Uh, they are not in, on platform. Can you read, uh, Aska? For I mean, uh, Kubas for them. Thank you, Chair. The Northern Cape negotiating mandate received by the committee after deliberations and public input, the committee position on the bill is that after due deliberation, the Portfolio Committee on Agriculture, Land Reform, Rural Development, Environment and Nature Conservation hereby support the bill. There is no mention of any need for Amendments, although the final paragraph states the committee recommends to the House to mandate the permanent delegates to participate in the deliberations at the negotiating stage and to support the bill, taking note of the comment or recommendation raised by stakeholders. But I'm speaking under correction, but none of these were carried forward as conditions of the negotiating mandate. Aska, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't have any input or further or further amendments proposed. Correct, Chairperson. North, uh, Northern Cape did not have any proposed amendments. They supported with no amendments. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move to another province. Uh, Northwest. Can you read uh, for me, uh, Kubas? Chair, I'm just in the process of setting it up to share, then I will read your province's mandate. It's open. The negotiating mandate from Northwest Province received after negotiation or deliberations in the province states that the vote of the legislature is the Northwest Provincial Legislature vote in favor of the National Forest Amendment Bill with proposed amendments. The proposed amendments are as follows. Clause one, definitions. The definition of the word natural forest is supported as it is more of an ecosystem approach. However, there's a strong proposal that guidelines be developed to inform decisions on natural forests as a diagnostic species associated with natural forest could occur in dense woodland. In this instance, consideration will then need to be given to which non-diagnostic species occur in association with diagnostic species and their abundance. Number two. 
The current definition of woodland pose some challenges that does not address what size area would individuals look at for the 5% cover if the tree cover occurs in clumps. What does the term area mean in this context? Could the area between clumps with no tree cover then be considered not to be woodland? It is therefore proposed that the definition of woodland include the following wording to resolve challenges. That woodland to also encompasses encompasses any area defined as woodland vegetation type in the official national vegetation classification or a specialist botanical survey or report. Point three, clause two, section two A, considered delegation or delegation the powers to authorize access to the natural forest to Magosi through their formal structure house of traditional leaders this will enable Magosi to authorize harvesting or collection of natural trees for household use and for traditional events and the ritual like funeral coma initiation school point four Section 3 provides that natural forests may not be destroyed save in exceptional circumstances. However, there is no clarity on what is meant by destruction of natural forest. This creates a comply. A compl sorry. This creates a compliance and enforcement challenge as developers currently claim that Section 3 does not apply to their project as destruction of natural forest means destroying more of a forest than what they are aiming to destroy. The term is therefore proposed to be defined as destruction of natural forest amounts to any action where one or more mature trees in a natural forest is fouled or caused to die and or undergrowth is removed for the purpose of change in land use. This will require anyone wishing to destroy natural forest for a new land use to apply for a Section 7 license and they would have to prove exceptional circumstances for the granting of the license. Point five, the term new land use in Section 3 could also be understood as a land use regulated by town planning laws, allowing an argument that Section 3 does not apply to some developments because they already have a zoning approval. It's therefore proposed that the term new land use be defined as any human activity leading to the use of land which would require the removal of natural forest which is not restricted to land use requiring land use approval or zoning. Point six, clause four of the bill, subsection 8.3, proposed Proposal that the wording exceptional circumstances be explained by developing a list of such circumstances. Point seven. The challenges relating to section 17.2 are not completely rectified by the proposed amendments, as reference is still made to a natural forest or woodland protected under section 12.1. This places a severe restriction on which woodlands would qualify for a controlled forest area, as such woodland would first have to be declared a protected woodland under Section 12. The Minister should be able to intervene in any instance a woodland being deforested, irrespective of whether it has been declared under Section 12.1. It is therefore proposed that amendment should thus read, a natural forest or woodland which is threatened by deforestation and the reference to protection under section 12.1 should be removed. Point eight, clause eight of the bill, section 17 has a potential significant impact on land use capabilities and existing rights of citizens. It is therefore proposed that the provision should be made for some remedial action where existing land and resource rights of people are affected. There should be a clear criteria that might lead for when this unilateral declaration can take place, especially the land use, the land under the administration of tribal authorities, as that is where the cultural and spiritual practices are being performed, which are occurring mostly in the forest. Point nine, clause 16, section 58. It is proposed that harsher fines should be issued where a commercial forest alien species are not well managed and invasive plants spread from these areas, invading pockets of indigenous forest and grasslands. 
commercial forests should not be allowed in highly productive quaternities, quaternaries in catchments where significant percentages of water in the catchment are generated. These areas should be conserved and indigenous forests declared as a matter of priority. Point 10. It is further proposed that fines and penalties must have categories because indigenous trees are a resource for survival for indigent citizens of the country. Previously disadvantaged citizens must receive a lower fine or must outrightly be exempted. Point 11. The minister must consider the need to develop regulations for the authorization of the removal of forest in protected areas and or protected environments. There must be a single process towards the authorization and imposing of penalties since protected forests are not in the Protected Areas Act. That is the end of the inputs received from Northwest Province. I will hand back to the committee chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Kubas. Aska? Lord Edmund? Uh, from our side, we, we appreciate the support from Northwest Legislature. And now with the proposed amendments uh, on clause one, so section two, we note this, the province's support of the definition of national forest. Uh, we, are, we, we also agree that the of the act once finalized. On clause, still on clause one, section two, the proposal on the definition of woodland. On this one, Chair, we, we are supporting the some form of revision of this definition. Uh, and in fact, we are proposing alternative wording to say Woodlands means a, a group of indigenous trees which are not natural forests, but whose crowns cover at least 5% of the area they occupy and which may in a, in a degraded state have a crown cover of less than 5% or any vegetation type declared by the minister to be wood, a woodland by noticing the Gazette. So with this alternative definition, we are give, giving minister the leeway to make that determination through a Gazette. And this, I, I, we, we feel that it, that it will then address the concerns raised by the stakeholders. But uh, we just wanted to emphasize that we don't support the, the inclusion of reference to certain documents that are outside of our control, in, uh, including the reference to the National Vegetation Classification or the Bot Botanical Survey or, or report. So to that extent, we don't support the definition. Yeah. Uh, on the clause two, section two a, section two a, the, the proposal is that we need to consider delegation of powers to the House of Traditional Leaders. Mm. Our response to this one is that there already is provision for, for the, this kind of delegation. Section 48 of the Act, it gives minister powers to delegate the exercise of any office or her powers to an organ of state, a person who is, or a person who is not an organ of state. So minister is that uh, leeway to then uh, further delegate her powers. So there is room for minister to delegate powers to House of Traditional Leaders uh, when necessary. On clause three, section seven, this, this, is, a, this is the proposal, the recommendation is to for us to define the term destruction of natural forest. Uh, oh. so in our view, there is merit to define this, this, this concept. Uh, but we are, we, and we are supporting the proposal, but they, we are just in, uh, requesting that we include the word resource use towards the end of that, of that, of the proposal. 
So, Chair, on this one, we are supporting the definition subject to inclusion of that of that wording. But our concern is that it's not in the current version of the bill, but the committee will decide on it. On the new de definition of the term new land use, we are supporting it fully, but noting that it's not part of the current version of the bill. On the proposal to, the, to define the term exceptional circumstances, uh, or to narrow down that concept, Chair, we have a legal opinion which advises against us re uh, uh, restricting that definition, I mean, that concept of exceptional circumstances. I think we have shared this opinion with our state law advisors, uh, and I'm hoping that the parliamentary legal, legal advisors have the copy of the opinion and members as well. If not, I think we, we can share it immediately after the session. But the opinion generally is, is, says that we cannot really restrict that concept. Uh, otherwise, it may render the, the act unimplementable. So Chair, we have a, a legal opinion from the National Council, which we, are, we can share on, on this point. But we are against, uh, our position is that we should not re we define that concept. Uh, on clause eight, section seven, subsection two, on this one, I think we, we did mention before that the uh, section 12, subsection one was amended by uh, the Amendment Act of 2005, and there's no need for us to make any further amendments in terms of removing that, that, that section. In terms of Clause 8, Section 17, uh, Chair, the, our response to this one is that, in fact, I'm just trying to read through the, the recommendation. So this one, Chase, it's what we've discussed already, I think in our initial, initial mandate where there were concerns about that emergency clause where we the proposal is that we need to uh, not necessarily follow the PACHA consultation requirement initially, but allow for minister in emergency situations to, to be empowered to make a decision. And uh, thereafter, uh, follow a consultative process uh, as an after as an uh, as an after the fact uh, process. So I think I did explain in detail uh, pre in, in, initially that this is a necessity. It's all uh, informed by the circumstances of, of each case. It's reserved for exceptional circumstances. So minister won't uh, use it uh, willy-nilly to be informed by the extremity of the circumstances at hand. So there is justification for us to make room for minister to make that those uh, those decisions to make decisions under those emergency situations. But the requirement to consult is not advantage citizens. <laughs> 